All right, can everyone hear me? Looks like it's up, nice. Uh, so today I'm gonna be talking about putting data on the edge. Uh, whenever I say edge, I uh, also think devices, right? So like it's not just edge servers, it can also be things like this phone, which I'm using to hopefully run a live demo very shortly. So uh, we're gonna put data on the edge and let's talk about how that works. So traditional applications back in the day, right? We, we have origin servers, maybe that's a database, maybe that's your web server, and we're sending data to wherever uh, clients are connecting from. And it works, it's super simple. Uh, you have like a sort of monolith stack. Um, but you know, people from other sides of the world might not have as good of an experience as people who are close. Uh, so how do we solve that? Well, one way people have tried to solve this is sort of caching it on the edge. Like, let's just put some servers closer to users, like CDN, for example, and uh, put actually have the data sort of cache there and like replicate there. And uh, this works great. Um, however, you know, it, it, it's just like it solves everything, right? It, like, it's it's great. But uh, you know, how do you keep it up to date? Right? Like, this is um, sort of the ultimate problem of caching anything, is knowing when to invalidate the cache. And uh, there's, there's not a lot of excellent solutions here. They're all, they all have a lot of trade-offs. And so we have to think about this a little bit. So um, let's say we have some data. So these green boxes represent some arbitrary data uh, wherever it is. And we're going to go ahead and copy that data to the edge. So this is all straightforward so far. Um, we make some changes, and then we want to sort of think about what are ways we can update the edge? Um, so like one way that we've definitely seen before and maybe some of you have even done inside your applications is just to like resend everything whenever there's a change. Um, this is a really common strategy, you'd be like surprised. Uh, with a lot of CDNs, they just detect like an e-tag header or something like that and re-download the entire file to the, to the cache. Um, but it's not great for small changes. Let's say you change like the first four kilobytes of a file, we don't want to have to download that entire file again, right? This is an unnecessary amount of bandwidth usage and latency. Another solution that we've seen, and this is how databases tend to solve this problem, is sending changes, right? So they, instead of, uh, instead of sending like the whole snapshot, they sort of record all the individual, individual mutations that happen to the file, and they stream those mutations to the edge or to a replica or wherever they need to go. Um, and that works great, and so like the client can replay these changes. Uh, but this has sort of two problems when you're talking about edge workloads. The first problem is that every client has to see every single change, even if they actually don't care about all of those changes. Um, and the second thing is that every client has to sort of have a full copy of the data to be able to handle this. Um, there are some hacks you can get around this. You can you can minimize. You can do sort of uh, log level filtering and stuff like that. But it is a complex thing to sort of solve. What if there was another solution? What if we can efficiently tell clients what portions of the data changes without actually sending the actual data to the client? And instead, we just let the clients, now that they know exactly which portion of the data has changed, they can actually go and retrieve those chunks of the data that they actually care about. Um, and if we can do this in a transactionally consistent way, um, we can build some really cool sort of edge-first applications with this model. So I'm introducing a technology that I've spent the last six months building called Graft. Uh, it is not yet open source, but I hope to make it open source very soon, sometime in the next month or two. Um, I like to think about it as like grafting bonsai trees together, uh, because under the hood, uh, essentially Graft uses trees. So Graft uses Merkle trees to detect changes, so it basically models your data structure. Uh, it, it models a Merkle tree on top of that. A Merkle tree, for anyone who doesn't know, is essentially a tree where all the links, like all the edges within the tree, are hashes of those subtrees. Um, you could sort of think of it that way. And the advantage of Merkle trees, there's a lot of advantages. One advantage is that it's very efficient to detect which subsets of the tree has changed. And so it can use that to replicate metadata about the data structure to clients without actually sending the actual change data itself. So we're essentially we're just, we're, uh, separating metadata and data. And once the client receives those, the metadata, it can now essentially reach out to um, a storage node and just download the portions of the file that it actually wants. Uh, and again, these files don't have to be traditional like block-based files. They can be a database, they can be complex data structures, whatever you want to represent. So uh, this is what Graft essentially does. Uh, it has a bunch of other really cool features that I've been working on and really excited about. Um, for anyone who is like into data, data replication, stuff like that, you'll recognize some of these terms, but I'm not going to go into too much detail because we are doing a lightning talk. So uh, nothing could possibly go wrong. Let's just go ahead and jump into the first ever live demo of Graft. Woo! 
in history. Okay, uh, is that font big enough? Oh man, it might not be. Let's do that. Cool. Uh, all right. Um, so, <laughs> what we're going to do, if this doesn't break, uh, is I have this script called shell.sh. It does a lot of magical stuff. All it really does that matters is that it runs normal SQLite. This is completely vanilla SQLite installed on my Mac. I've not done anything to it. Um, however, I have told SQLite to load a shared object, uh, which it totally trusts it is not going to do anything scary. Um, and this shared object uh, installs Graft as a storage engine into SQLite. And so SQLite doesn't know anything. Graft also doesn't know anything. Graft doesn't even know what SQLite is. It just sees a bunch of bytes. And it's, SQLite tells Graft, hey, please replicate these bytes somewhere. Um, so when we run this shell, we are connecting to my graph server, and this is connecting to the lo closest location to us automatically, which happens to be Seattle. Um, and so I'm going to read in a data set, and I'm going to select a row out of this data set. This data set, uh, for anyone who's not familiar with SQLite, is a basic SQL, uh, SQL based relational database that just runs like an embedded system. So as you can see, I have this row. ID 512, just one row in this database. Uh, this database contains 4,000 rows. It's very, very simple. Okay, so we have this on the left side. And what's happened behind the scenes is that Graft has taken this database and constructed a Merkle tree over it and sh shipped the metadata of that Merkle tree to Seattle. And that's all that's happened. Um, now, on the right side, what we're going to do is the part of the demo that totally could fail. Okay, cool, it worked. So what just happened is that you see how it says dash R Y Y Z? That's Toronto. So what's happened is we've started a server in Toronto. We've connected that server. We have completely without like any state, this is a completely stateless system, uh, connected the server in Toronto. And then we've said, hey, I want to follow a volume with like this ID. And I've, 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 the script obviously has like a lot of this stuff in the behind the scenes. I'm not showing you all the details. But the idea is that um, we've connected to Toronto. Toronto doesn't know anything about Seattle. We've said we want to connect to this, this graft. And uh, Toronto's connected to Seattle automatically through the graft network. And we've formed a sort of bridge. And so now my computer's connected to Seattle. Seattle's connected to Toronto. Toronto's connected back to my computer. And if everything goes well, we're going to get the same result. And we never, we never told Graft about like SQLite. We never, we, it doesn't really know what it's replicating. It's simply replicating uh, pages around the world really quickly. Now, what's really cool about this is if I run this Graft debug command, you see that it says 3 out of 16 and 0 out of 5. What that means is that Graft has actually only, only downloaded three SQLite pages over the network. Um, the rest of the database it doesn't need. And the reason it doesn't need is because we said select tar, star from t where id equals 512. We, yeah, I'm out of time. But this is the demo. Uh, Graft works. It replicates data around. If you're interested in this, um, please come and find me, and I'll show you more cool stuff. Uh, it's running on my own private, like, I built complete everything from scratch. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Cool.